It's the biggest luxury in the world to be able to be in your own space making stuff. The world just drops away. And here I am in the middle of the old Kent Road with the sirens and the train, and it all just drops away. I may as well be in a field in the Lake District. I could be anywhere. It's absolutely magical. My name is Nicola Hicks. I am a sculptor. I was born in 1960 in London to a family of artists. I have lived in London and many other places, but I always come back to London because it's so exciting. I love being a Londoner. Traditionally, people say sculptors fall into being carvers or modelers. I appear to be both. I'm frustrated by each in turn. A medium like plaster means that no other process is actually necessary. If you make things in clay or wax, they have to be cast, it has to be addressed. The, the fact that when you say it's finished, it isn't finished because it's got to go through another stage. What I particularly like about plaster is that when you've finished, it's stable. So you can go on and have it cast into bronze or anything else, but you do actually have a stable object. Plaster is like trying to model with mashed potato or um, icing sugar. Um, it's got no stretch, it's got no inner core strength. So if you add in something fibrous, it becomes much more plastic and it will hold its shape. I add in straw and I use straw because I love the smell of it, I love the colour of it, I love the look of it. I usually have it about because I like having animals around. I'm also using, there might be torn up newspaper, it might be other bits of old plaster. It's matter in order to give it body to build with. Cal says Moo will have come from being in Ireland, being surrounded by fields full of cows. I would have been looking out of a cottage window or I would have been standing at a gate thinking about everything that was going on in my life and looking at the cow and somehow the two marry up and a work is born out of that. When I say cow says moo, perhaps I am acknowledging the very childish part of me that is thrilled by the sight of an animal rolling in wet grass. Maybe I am have actually got my son by now on my hip, little baby, and I'm saying, you know, we read our picture books and sh sheep says ba, puppy says woof, cow says moo, there's a cow. But the difference between this lovely picture of a cow and the romanticised idea that the cow says moo, because they don't say moo, they make this fabulous chest noise of, of earth and steam. Um, but maybe it's an acknowledgement of how multifaceted your imagination is and the ways it works. And sun on hip, cow in the field, cow says moo, but actually look at that incredible beast with its sinewy muscles rolling in the wet grass, smelling the flowers, getting muddy. I've always been quite interested in, in the tricky business around plinths. And I've rather liked the idea that things don't need plinths. That actually, there's the, the, you know, a plinth is a device to separate a sculpture from the environment it's in, or to get it to a perfect height. So perhaps if I've made something on a modelling stand and it's been made at this height, maybe I want to keep it at that height, in which case I'm going to have to have something underneath it. And if it's not going to be another sculpture, it's going to have to be a plinth. But I also really like the idea that a sculpture holds its own space. And it's one of the ways you can tell whether a sculpture is succeeding, is if it's holding its own space. I would hope that people would think it was elegant and ordinary to have sculpture in a setting that's accessible for them.
It's not in memory of something, it's not a memorial, it's just a heartfelt response to something seen. I'm showing you, this is how I felt about a cow on that day. And this is what I enjoyed, and it's there. For the first half of my career, I fought really, really hard not to be called a woman artist. I saw it as an insult to be called a female artist. So it's irrelevant. I'm an artist. I'm a sculptor. It, it's not important. It was a very different art world that I grew up in, with very different sensibilities and trip hazards. Now, in this world we live in, I am so proud to be a member of this incredible collection. But also, I'm so proud of my fellow female artists. I see what we've had to battle through, the compromises we haven't made. It's become completely different. It's now something I'm evangelical about. I am incredibly happy to um, to stand up and talk about the difficulties of being a professional female. Let's not limit it to the arts. A professional female who wants more than a profession. I want, I want it all. I want a family. I want a happy marriage. I want my career. I want I want the whole the whole the whole picture. And I believe that that whole picture should be available for every single bright young woman who's coming onto the scene. And if that isn't automatic and automatically available and comfortably available, then we've still got work to do. <laughs>